maps in the Bible, pictures, names like Luke, 66 books, Old Testament, 39, and then 27 in the New Testament, and some extra books as well. But today, we are after the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we read from Mark's Gospel, the last few verses, a passage which is disputed by some early manuscripts of the Bible. Uh, it tells how Jesus meets and speaks with different people, though it's very essential. Verse 9 all the way through verse 20, Mark chapter 16. And that will be the end of Mark's Gospel. We've made it. Stefan Heger. I'm reading with you from Switzerland, the New International Reader's Version. And it is a special day we celebrate, Easter Sunday, the first day of the week. And that's how we celebrate with music, songs, meals, fruit, chocolate, beautiful morning sunshine, but also... We read that Jesus rose from the dead early on the first day of the week. That's why we worship, celebrate on Sunday. Because Jesus is not in the grave. He did not decay. His body was transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit into a new eternal body, which now lives with the Father in heaven from where he will come back. This body can go in and out into this natural world because it's a supernatural new body. And it's the prototype of the body we will get if we believe in Jesus. Hey, it says he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. We read yesterday and the day before that Mary and Mary and Mary three and Salome were mentioned standing at Jesus' cross. The four women and then there were two of them, two women at the burial place and at the resurrection three again. Mary Magdalene, Mary and the other Mary and Salome. Now, today Mary Magdalene again is mentioned in verse 9 of 16th chapter, John Mark's Gospel. Hey, he had driven out seven demons out of her. So this is the Mary Magdalene, I would say, the most favorite woman of Jesus. A sister in Christ, seven demons were driven out of her. That's how she is mentioned, not by what she has done three years for Jesus, but what Jesus has done for her. It's all about Jesus doing something for you. That's the heart of Christianity. It's not what you do for God, it's what God does for you. This makes the difference between Christianity and any other world religion. Come on, we read on verse 10. She went and told those who had been with him. The other disciples, she found them crying. They were very sad. They heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, but they did not believe it. After that, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them. This happened while they were walking out in the country. The two returned and told the others about it. But the others did not believe them either. Two disciples, this story is also in Luke's Gospel, in full length. And they were two witnesses, two disciples, they walked with him. And then later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. They were eating in their room, hiding. Jesus appeared. The door was closed. He walked straight in into their room. Verse 14. He spoke firmly to them because they had no faith. They had no faith. They would not believe those who had seen him after he rose from the dead. So they saw him for themselves. He said to them, look at this now. Go into all the world. Preach the good news to everyone. 
So the gospel is good news. It's positive. It's life changing. Verse 16. Chapter 16, verse 16. Those who believe and is baptized will be saved. Do you believe in Jesus? Have you made him the Lord of your life? Have you taken baptism? Those who do not believe, it says here in verse 16, will be punished. Either you be punished for your sins, or you believe in Jesus and your sins are punished right there at the cross 2,000 years ago. They were punished already because he died for you and for me. Now let's read verse 17. Here are the miraculous signs that those who believe will do. In my name they will drive out demons. Okay, Jesus drove out seven demons of Mary Magdalene. He gave you and me as his followers through the Holy Spirit the same power to drive out demons. That's a promise. They will speak in languages they had not known before. Speaking in tongues is a very important thing for a follower of Jesus. Not just to pray from your mind, but to pray from your from the Holy Spirit, speaking with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And verse 18, they will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink a deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and people will get well. They will get better. That's how we can heal in Jesus' name. When the Lord Jesus finished speaking to them, verse 19, he was taken up into heaven and then he sat down at the right hand of God, of Father God in heaven. He is there. From there he will come back again. That's verse 19, chapter 16 and verse 20. The last verse of this chapter, we are finishing with the last one. When the disciples went out and they preached everywhere, the Lord worked with them and he backed up his word by the signs that went with it.